All these Kickstarters are making my wallet cry. Roll the intro. Welcome back to To The Point. My name is Mike Walker and today we're going to look at another Kickstarter project named Scythe. It's a one to five player game from Stonemaier Games. It plays in about two hours. Let me show you how you play it and then I'm going to let you know what I think. Let's do it. All right, so I'm not going to go over all the rules. I'm just going to give you the concept on how roughly the game is played. This is how your play area would be set up, like for the blue player at the beginning of the game. And these little player boards are great because it's like a player aid. It tells you everything that you need to know to take a turn. There's four different actions you can take. All the boards are different. You get them randomly throughout the board. It has like a type of government you, are, you have, like this is agriculture for this one, and the one that's on the board is engineering, and there's five altogether, so they're all different. So the different actions you can take is a move action, a trade action, produce action, or a bolster action. So along the top is the cost. So movement is free. These ones you have to pay gold for. These ones you're gonna have all your meeples lined up as you can see on the board here. Here we have all your meeples lined up and depending on how many meeples you've put on the board already is gonna change the cost to do the, the produce action. So not only do you, so you produce on two hexes to start and you can see that this is a nice little groove in it. Just like on the board down here, you're gonna start with cubes in the top of the board. So it's gonna restrict some of the things you can do and during the game you can take these bottom actions which are gonna move the cubes from the, the top to the bottom. So the trade gets you two resources of any kind. Produce lets you produce on two hexes to start. Bolster gets you some power that you use for uh, combat and other abilities and stuff. And you can see on the board below us here, there's buildings that cover these big spaces here. So when you build the buildings, it also uncovers the benefit that you get for those. So usually when you start, you only can do the top action because you can't afford the bottom action. But once you start getting resources, then you can start paying for these bottom actions. If you take this action, you do the top first and then you do the bottom one. There's upgrade, deploy, build, and enlist. So you do the payment, you get the benefit, and they're all different on the bottom as well. The different cards, it's all like divided it's the same amount of gold, but it's different. It's divided up to the different categories. The only difference between this, you can see this symbol right here, which means if the player to your left or right does this action during their turn, you're going to get this benefit. So if you or they do the action, you get this benefit in the circle. So it's a pretty neat system. Looks gorgeous when it's on the board. That's roughly how the turns go. Like a player takes one action and it goes around clockwise order. And you can't do the same action twice. You'll put your little pawn here on the action that you've taken. So you know when it comes around to your turn next that you can't take that action again and you have to take a different action. So here's how you set up at the beginning of the game. You get minions on the two adjacent uh, territories to your home starting area. And you have these cool looking leaders. So one for every color, so this is blue. So the cool things you can do with your leaders is you can take them here to the center, which is called the factory. Center of the board. Here's called the factory. And in the factory, once you get your leader there for the first time, you're gonna be able to draw a factory card. Where are they here? So they'll go beside your, uh, beside your your little sheet there with actions and they give you new actions. They all end with a double move, but they all give you like super benefits. You get one of these cards and like all the other art, it's fantastic. Like look at these things. So that's from going to the center. The other thing your leader can do is go to these little points of interest. As soon as your leader moves in, you're gonna take these little tokens off and then you get these really neat like themed story things where you have three different options on the bottom and you get to pick one. So you read it aloud, you pick one, some is like losing popularity and you get stuff or you help the villagers out and it's all unique art and it's all fantastic. So leader going to the center, leader picking up points of interest and of course moving your leader or the really cool mechs in. That's one thing I didn't show either is the top 
the top part of the area thing this is where the four mechs were on your sheet as you build the mechs and they go out it gives all your plastic pieces special ability plastic pieces being your mechs or your leader and they're both uh, i think three of them are the same for all the factions and then they have one special one just for them you can see at the top here it's telling you it's good for their good for the two plus your leader and your mechs get these benefits as you take them off and put them on the board in this game nothing ever dies when you lose pieces due to combat or being pushed away they just go back to your home territory and you can move them out later so it's like extra movement or uh, special abilities uh, moving between things and everyone has the same thing river walk because when you start the not unlike most games where they really outline the rivers uh, it really matters in this because everyone is blocked off you can't get across the river unless you're using a special ability or a mine in the center of the board there are six mines that are all interconnected and when you build a mine off your player mat it's this building here it means you're connected to the mine system people can't go back through your mine but you are connected to the mines there can only be one building per uh, territory and the other thing you do on the map is one of the actions like i told you is produce when you do a produce action like i said i'll just show you this again the produce action is here normally at the beginning of the game this one's covered up so you pick any two hexes that you produce on and you're going to produce goods equal to the number of meeples you have so you can see in this is a wood area i have one meeple so you're going to produce one wood so i've chosen these two hexes and in this one I'm going to produce one oil so if i had two here i would produce two oil and it's just as many meeples as you have in the in the hex is how much goods you're going to produce so there's wood and food and you use all the all these goods to do certain things you need iron to build your necks to get them out on the table there's iron oil you've seen so there's four different uh, goods that you need throughout the game to do all sorts of different things. So that's pretty well what you get to do on the board. Now I'm just going to tell you how you win. All right, so before we do uh, victory points, we need to do combat. Combat happens when someone takes a move action here. And you see they get two movement points. So that means they can move two of their pieces, one space each. So whites decide they're going to attack. So one of their movement points, they're going to move their one mech into here and they move a worker somewhere else. So now that their movement phase is over, we go into combat. If white had moved any of his, his leader or uh, a mech into a hex that just had workers, they would be pushed back to the starting position and you'd lose a popularity for every worker that you pushed away. So now that his movement's done, they're going to do a combat. So how combat works is I've got a, a power track up here. You're allowed to spend power in combat up to seven total. So blue has nine power, but he can only spend seven if he wants. And white has, only, has five, so he can spend up to five. They have a nice little dial to uh, track how much power you want to spend. And at the beginning of the game and throughout the game, you can collect these combat cards and you're allowed to add these combat cards to your combat value as well. They all have numbers from two to five. They all have unique art on them as well, which is fantastic as well. So you're allowed to add one card per piece of plastic you have in the combat. So in this example, blue can add up to three cards and white can only add one. So whites decide to add one card and at this particular time, blue only has one card to add, so he adds it. Blue's gonna add his maximum seven power. So he puts seven on the dial and his one card for a total of nine. White is also going to add his five power that he has. Plus he's got a five card, which is a total of 10. So it is nine to 10. White wins because the actual pieces don't add any value to the combat. So blue gets pushed back to his home territory, he just simply picks up his pieces and puts them back on his home circle and he can move them out later. And that's combat. White now has control of the hex. So the game ends as soon as someone gets six stars out here on the track. There's 10 different things you can do to get your stars out. The first one is get all 
six of your upgrades done. That is moving all of the cubes that were on the top of your uh, chart to the bottom. So once you've moved all six down, then you can put a star here. If you get all four of your mechs out, all four of your buildings, all four of your enlist enlists out, that was the three uh, cylinder, the four cylinders that were on the bottom of your uh, card, all eight of your workers. The other thing I didn't talk about were the special abilities. I'll just throw that in now. At the beginning of the game, everyone's dealt um, two of these special mission cards, all sorts of different things from having resources to having you know less money than everybody else. If you ever achieve the conditions for those, you just flip the card up and you get to put a star here. Uh, there's two spots for winning battles. So if you win a battle, you put a star in each one. Then having your popularity chart to the top, you get a star or having your power to the top of the chart gets you a star. Like I said, as soon as there's one player has six of their stars up there, the game is over and then you do a final scoring. So then we go to final scoring. Final scoring is based on where you are on the popularity track. So if you're in this section here, you're going to score this row here and so on and so forth. So what you're going to score is for every store, every star you have on the track, you're going to score depending on where you are in the popularity track. So in this case, it's three. The best case is five. So if you're the one that put six stars up there, you'd get 30 points. Next is for the territories you control. You control territory if you're the only person that has figures or buildings in that hex. And the factory in the center is worth three hexes. So say if you have, you know, four hexes, this middle row and your popularity was here in this middle column, and you had four, like I said, you'd get 12 victory points because they're worth three each. The last column is uh, resources. For every two resources, you score whatever column your popularity is in. Also at the beginning of the game, we would have put out one of these tiles and it's just bonus scoring at the end and they're all based on buildings. Whether your buildings are next to rivers, whether your buildings are next to mines, other buildings, you've picked one of these at random. So every game's gonna be different and you're gonna score bonus victory points accordingly. So plus the money you have left over, because all victory points, money equals victory points. Whoever has the most money is the winner. All right, so that was uh, Scythe. I know I didn't cover all the rules. I know I probably missed some. I probably got some wrong, but the videos were getting too long. This is not a how to play video. This is a, just a quick review of what I think of the game, why I think you should either A, try it out, or B, if you're thinking about purchasing it, comparing it to these other games. So anyway, let's just get on with it. And we're gonna do the fiddly bits. The only thing, it's a very tight game, so the only fiddly bits I thought there were were the, once you do the enlist action and you uncover the part where you get to react to other people doing their secondary actions, trying to get people to remember to do that or remembering to ask people what action they've done, I thought it was a little bit fiddly. I also thought that it might have been added to uh, give some player interaction where there really isn't none. Well, you'll say, well, what about the combat? Well, that's the segue into the combat, which is uh, Dune style or Rex, uh, which is terrible and and awful. You know, there I've heard everyone will say it. It'll say, well, it's just the threat of combat or it's not a war game or, or you know, you can spin it however you like. The simple truth of it is that uh, you, I feel very unfulfilled and think the combat is garbage. Uh, that being said, does that make this a bad game? Well, it's just like a separation between the two. You have these really cool mechs and you think the combat system is going to be good, but it's not. But does that mean this is a bad game? Quite the opposite. Um, just the art in the game everyone talks about the art it's not the art that's going to drive this game it's solid it's got everything you want in there uh, like the story cards alone you flip it up and the story tells you what's going on all it does is give you the options the story is going to the, the picture tells you everything else you're going to be arm wrestling in a pub you're going to be cutting trees down to teach kids lessons you're going to be uh, i don't want to go through them all because they're all fantastic it brings you into the game and the art on each card is amazing um now for the number of players i've played this with two 
three, four, and five players, and it's worked great with all numbers. There's even a solo mode in the game. I haven't tried that yet, but I'm sure they did a great job. Um, and so what do I like most about this game? gives me the feel of a little bit of clash of cultures where you have to plan ahead because you want to get the most of each action uh, you want to make sure you have the resources uh, set up so you're gonna be able to do the top and the bottom part of each action as you do them you want to just do the top and then come back and forth you want to plan about six moves ahead of time so you're getting both parts of all actions as you cycle through your card um, then there's the game length the game ends, like I said, as soon as someone's put out six stars, and that's pretty well the point where you're thinking, gee, I wish this game was over, boom, the game's over. It only lasts about two hours. It's great. Um, now, why do I have these other games on the table here? Let's start with Exodus and Churi. Okay, this is up here because of the action cards. You're gonna lay out your action cards, and they have a top and bottom. So you have to sort of plan out what you wanna do, sort of like this, where you have to, you know, manage your two actions together and then Kemet it, you also have your own little tableau of actions that you do and the map is very similar as well where in Kemet everyone's home territory is exactly the same number of spaces away from each other even though it looks like someone's across the board the way they got the board laid out everyone's exactly the same number of spaces and the mines in Scythe work the same way it keeps everyone close you travel through the mines you can get to the guy that's furthest away just as fast as the guy that's right beside you clash of cultures is just like I said with the actions you got to in clash of cultures you only have three actions and you want to make sure you do them in the right order where you're going to have the resources that you want to get the most out of all three of your actions it also has where you're building buildings to get special abilities and victory points and cool units just like scythe so in this class of games it's got it all it's got the victory points it's got the figures it's got uh, the, the resources doesn't have the combat but the last game we played no one even did a single combat it did not affect the game it was still great I'm going to give it a solid uh, 9 out of 10 it's that good give it a try you'll like it thank you very much for watching if you uh, came to this video not through the dice tower Go check out the Dice Tower. They've got other uh, reviews of tons of games. They've got board game breakfast, throat punch lunch, all sorts of variety shows that will bring you up to date in what this board game thing is all about. Thank you for watching To The Point. My name's Mike Walker. I will see you next week. <sighs> the others are coming. The prophecy of the seven is nigh. Your demonic apocalypse survival plan will fail. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.